Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, animate an object with a skeleton along a path and to get that object to bend along the path that it's following. So I have an object here that I've created. It's actually just uh, several cylinders that have been um, added together, or several cylinders that have been duplicated and then I just use, use the union tool under the booleans menu to join them all together. So it's now one long cylinder, but it's got lots of um, lines here. Okay, so um, I've got that, that's my shape, and I'm just about to create the curve. So what I'll do is I'll just move this over here. All right, um, and so I'll create the curve. So I'm gonna go create uh, curve tools, CV curve tool, and then I'm just going to create a rough curve here just by clicking on each point and then hitting enter or return. All right, so there's my curve. Now I'm going to add a skeleton. So to do that, need to change the menu set to rigging. So change from modeling to rigging and then go to the skeleton menu. Um, and click on create joints. Okay, um, you can change some of the settings there in the option box by clicking on that box. Um, so you can set the short bone length and long bone length the same and short bone radius and long bone radius the same. Um, and then basically just uh, click to create the skeleton. So click, 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 click. And actually it helps to, if you click on shading and choose X-ray, it helps to see the skeleton inside that shape. So um, if we orbit, just make sure it's all good. Um, it also helps to do it in the top view as well, just to make sure it's straight and in line. So mine, my skeleton isn't very straight, but I'm not too worried about it. It should be okay for this. So there we go. All right, click at the front of the skeleton. So you can click on different parts of the skeleton to select the hierarchy. But if you click at the um, start of the skeleton and then click hold down shift and select the actual shape that's inside, you can click on, just get rid of this box here, we'll click on skin and then bind skin. Okay, so that's the next bit that we needed to do. So bind skin so that the skeleton is now attached to the object or the shape. All right, next thing to do is we need to um, rotate this shape 90 degrees. What we'll do though, before we do that actually, is we need to add a um, IK spline. All right, so you can hold down the space bar and when you hold down the space bar, you'll get this menu set here. Now, um, if you click skeleton and hold that down, there's an option here to create IK spline handle, and that's what we want to do. Click on the little option box there, and you can go and um, you can reset tool, and then click on number of spans, change that to four. So just have everything else default settings, but number of spans set to four. We want a few there. And then click on the first part of the skeleton, the start of it. And then, just zoom out a little bit, click on the end. All right, and that's that. All right, go to Windows and then Outliner. And if you scroll down in the Outliner, it, by adding that IK spline handle, it should have created um, these two things here. So IK handle one and curve two. All right, this curve here, curve one is the actual curve we created before with the CV curve tool. So right click on curve two um, and should be able to rename it, maybe double click on it. Yep, double click on it and rename it. And we'll just um, call this shape curve. All right, so you could be creating any shape here. It could be something like a fish. Um, it could be something like a train. All right, so um, this is just any shape here, so I've just called it shape curve. All right, so click on shape curve to select it. 
And then we need to go to the front view. So press the space bar and go to side actually. So we're gonna to go to the right side view. So go to side, move the mouse over there and press space again. And then while that shape curve is selected, rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, whoops, undo on the, it'll be on the X axis. No, nope, sorry, Y axis. <laughs> There we go. So rotate on the Y axis so that when you're in the right side view, the front is actually facing towards you. All right, if we go back to the perspective view, this is the front here and it should be facing um, towards where that little perspective text is. So that's perspective view. If you go to side view, it should be the front pointing straight towards you. All right, we'll go back to perspective view. We'll click on shape curve again, and then holding down the shift key, select this curve. And then we're going to go to constrain, motion paths, and the option box next to attach to motion path. And just um, edit, reset settings to the default settings. Click on apply. Okay, hold on, one thing. Just undo that. One thing I forgot to mention was you need to um, just go out of that. Click on that shape curve again. Go to modify and then click on center pivot. All right, and then just modify and freeze transformation. So just before um, you go and attach this to the motion path, you need to make sure that you've set center pivot and freeze transformations there from the modify menu. All right, so shape curves like that. Hold down shift, select the other curve again. Go to constrain, motion paths, attach to motion path, default settings, and then apply. That's better. So it's actually sticking to the motion path properly now because we just um, centered pivot. All right, next thing is go to constrain. So actually just, um, Go out of that, click on shape curve, click on that curve again, go to constrain, motion paths, flow path object, select the option box there, reset settings, so you've got the default settings, and click on apply. Okay, close that. Now, before we just added the um, that option there, of flow path object, if I just undo that, so command Z, and we move across the timeline here. We've got this object, it's moving along that path, but the whole object isn't actually sticking to the path. So the object is just staying the shape that it was in the beginning, and it's just moving along that path from the pivot point. So the pivot point is attached to the path. The pivot point is at the center of this object, it's attached to the path. But now if we go forward and redo that um, setting. So redo the flow path object. Now if we scrub backwards and forwards on the timeline, you can actually see the object is completely sticking to the motion path and the object bends when it goes around the corners like that. All right, so click on play. And that's it, a bit like a train. All right, um, we can go back to shading and get rid of the X-ray view. All right, one last thing. Um, with your objects, you may notice that they kind of twist, especially if the curve goes up and down. You might notice the objects twist, which you might not want. This, um, it probably is doing it, but you can't tell because it's just a cylinder. You can't necessarily see it twisting because it's not a complicated shape. But if your objects are twisting when they're going around the curve, then what you need to do is go to Windows, uh, Outliner, Scroll down, select the IK handle one. Go to your attribute editor. Click on IK handle one. Scroll down here. Um, so make sure you select IK solver attributes. Scroll down and then make sure that advanced twist controls is showing as well. And then tick this box next to enable twist controls. And 
up axis should be positive y. All right, that will stop it from twisting. All right, so that's basically it. That is how to attach an object um, and its skeleton to a motion path and to get a skeleton to um, move and bend along a motion path. Thanks for watching.